Everyone, I hope everyone had a wonderful, wonderful week. It is Erev Shabbos Parshas Ha'azinu, and it is days before Yom Kippurim. And uh, here in Israel, we are uh, not doing well with this uh, horrible pandemic, and the country is on lockdown, which is going to be intensifying. And we dive in Tashem, and we should focus at Philos wherever we are on Yom Kippurim to have Yeshuos, Vinachamos, those that are sick should have Rafu Shlema, those that are not sick should stay well should work hard on protecting other people. We should all work hard on protecting other people, protecting ourselves. Everyone's in it together. And Bez Hashem, we should put this uh, horrible, horrible disease behind us. So I want to talk a little bit about Mafti Yona and a few questions that uh, I want to raise. And we're not going to do a deep analysis, but I think there are some very, very strong insights to be shared. Um, question number one is, why are we reading Mafti Yona on Yom Kippur as a baseline question? And question number two is, why specifically do we read the Haftorah at Mincha time, at the end of the day? Why not read it, if it is really important to read, why not on, at Shachris specifically? So I think when you, uh, the simple answer to why we're reading Mafti Yona is because of the Tshuva of Nineveh. And Nineveh was a great city that had done tremendous, tremendous averus to the point that Hashem wanted to up overturn it, v'nehefeches, he wants to turn it upside down, similar to the Dor HaMabel, which was turned upside down, and to Sdom, which was turned upside down, Hashem has has this in his capabilities, and they do a tshuva, and as a result of their tshuva, they are saved, but I think there's something else deeper going on in this entire story that really revolves around Yonah, Yonah in the beginning of the, of the Navi is told, I have a mission for you, I want you to go to Nineveh. Hashem says. And Yonah start, tries to run away. He goes to Yafa, to the port city, wants to go to Chutzlars. Maybe Hashem won't track him down in Chutzlars. Of course, that is not the case. Yonah is, finds himself below, on the lower deck of the boat, taking a nap, and the boat starts to hit turbulence. The waves, it's going to get smashed. The sailors dive and pray to their gods. Yonah's finally awakened, and everyone understands it's because of Yonah. In fact, Yonah's trying to run away from Hashem, but when they ask him the famous, famous line, which is memorialized in a great niggin, uh, where do you come from? From what nation are you from? Yonah answers very religiously, very from, I'm a Jew, and I fear Hashem, and that's who I am. Which begs the question then, if Yonah sees himself as Ivri Anochi, and as Hashem Elokei Hashemayim Ani Yarei, so why is he running away from Hashem when Hashem has a mission for him? Why in the world does he run away? And finally, after he's swallowed by the dog, and he's spit out, and he davens a plaintive tefillah to Hashem, he's very from, he's a Novi. So why is he running away? It's very, very strange. And finally he goes to Ninveh, and sure, Ninveh does their tshuva. And then the climactic parak, the end of the Navi, which is really what I want to focus on. At the end of the Navi, <clears throat> so it seems like Yonah is, is frustrated, and he's upset. And the Navi describes that Vayera el Yonah ra'agdola vayichalo. Yonah's angry about something. He's bothered, and he davens to Hashem, and he says, I don't understand what happened over here. That's why I ran away. I ran away because I knew this was going to happen, and it upsets Yonah. I was upset because I knew you were going to forgive them. So, like, what's the point? I knew you were going to forgive them. That's why I ran away. And then Yonah says, Hashem nafshi So it's not worth living. It's not worth living. What, what, what exactly is Yonah saying? And then Hashem responds back, Is my beneficence so despicable to you? And that's it. Yonah walks away. And the Navi describes, it's very, very hot. Yonah builds for himself a sukkah. And then this beautiful tree emerges. Vayiman Hashem Elokim Kikayom. And it emerges to protect and to, to give Yonah, uh, Yonah shade. And Yonah is very happy. And then the very next day, a tolas, Hashem brings a tolas, a worm that eats the kikayon, that's, that dries it out, and it withers away. Now the beating sun is hovering over Yonah's head. And Vayomer tov mo chayai. And then there's the final lines of the Navi. And this, I think, is the key to this Navi, and the key to understand what it's all about and why we're reading it on Yom Kippur and why we're reading it at the end of the day. 
Vayomer Elokim El Yonah Hitev Charalaf is my beneficent, is my good so despicable to you? After all, you're so upset about this kikayon, this tree that gave you shade, and then I took it away. Vayomer Hashem Ata Chasal Kikayon, you were upset now that you lost this kikayon. Asher Lo Amalta, you put no work into it. Vlogi Dalto, you didn't raise it, you didn't grow it. Should been Laila Hayu bin Laila Avad, it was here today, gone tomorrow. And I shouldn't be concerned about Ninveh, this great, great city with thousands of people, with thousands of cattle. I shouldn't be concerned about it. End of Megillah. What, what's going on over here? What is Yonah and Hashem? What's this dialogue? Because I think that's the heart of it. So I believe the Peshat is as follows. Yonah sees the world as black and white. Yonah is a person who appreciates justice, who sees Din. And he says, I know what's going to happen. You're going to send me to Ninveh. I'm going to give them a Moses Shmuz, and then they're going to do tshuva. And that's not right. This was an evil city. They did tremendous, tremendous sins. And if you sin, you deserve justice. You deserve din. And Jonas says to Hashem, if this is how you run your world, this is not emes. This is not just. This is not din. And therefore, I want no part of it. Better that I should be taken away. Tov Mosi. I should die than live in this kind of world, which is really not just and not emes. And that's why I'm running away. I believe in you, God, sure, but not in how you're running the world. And then Hashem produces this shade tree, the kikayon, takes it away, and he's showing Yonah something. And he's showing Yonah that, yes, I am a kel rachum b'chanan. I am here to do good. God, good. I am good. I do, I'm merciful. And the reality is that none of us would survive. None of us would make it even a day without HaKadosh Baruch Hu's mercy. If everything is left to chance, if everything is done by din, you sin, you get punished right away, then we wouldn't have any chance of survival. And therefore, I shouldn't be concerned. You were concerned about some tree that you didn't put any effort into, and I shouldn't be concerned about Ninveh. I shouldn't have Rachamim. That's ultimately this fundamental philosophical debate that is going on between Yonah and Hashem. Yonah, Midas Hadin, MS, black and white, justice. And Hashem says that doesn't work in this world. I am a Kel Chanun Virachum and I need to be. And that's why at this point in the day, it's Mincha. We're tired out, we've been fasting, we've been in shul, and we're getting drained. And we put it all on the table. And if we really, really look at Hashem and say, Hashem, we deserve another year. We deserve tshuva. We look at all the good things we did. It's probably not our best argument. It's probably not how we win the case. The way we win the case is we plea for the mercy of the court. We look at Hashem and say, Hashem, I've done, I've done everything I can, but at the end of the day, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Elokai achel notzate eni kedai. I'm not kedai. But Hashem, you are the Kel Melech Chanun Verachum Ata. You are the merciful judge. You are Rachmana. And I'm going to say Slichos at Neila. And I'm going to be inspired by Mafti Yona to basically put myself to the mercy of the court and ask you for Rachamim. And that's what it's really all about. That's what Hashem is teaching us in Mafti Yona. That's the lesson Yona is learning. And that's what he's informing us. And therefore, at the end of the day, when we got nothing left, yeah, we have something big left. We have the plea, the plaintive plea to Yibam Shalom, that you are the Kel Racham V'chanon. Please have mercy on us. Please have mercy on the entire world, that we should be zochet to another year, that we should be zochet to health, to good things, to be able to go to work, to be able to go to school, to be able to go to yeshiva, to be able to go to shul. We should be zochet to have these things. Hashem, have mercy on us more than ever before. Hashem, have mercy on us. Because at the end of the day, that's all we really have going. So I wish everyone an easy fast, a meaningful fast, and it should be a Yom Kippurim where all our tefillos are answered.